Hey all, it's Moots. Welcome to Mining and Moz, episode 21. Today we're going to talk about battery voltage sag. I mean, what is it and how can we minimize it? Basically, battery voltage sag is a voltage drop, a type of voltage drop. My definition is the almost instantaneous voltage drop you see within the battery, not the voltage drops from wiring of the mod, contacts, protection circuits, other things external to the battery. So technically it's just a, another one of the voltage drops you might see in a circuit or inside a mod, but I use the term voltage sag to differentiate between these external ones and what happens inside the battery. Now when you charge a battery, you're at 4.2 volts, but you may have noticed when using a mech, when you press the button, voltage starts dropping down, you may lose power. Uh, in a regulated device, you may be able to see on the display, hey, you know, 4.1 volts, but when you press the button, whoop, I'm dropping down to 3.5 volts, maybe even lower. That drop in voltage is a combination of what's going on inside the battery, the battery sag, and all the other external voltage drops from wiring, contacts, protection circuits, etc. Now we can't do anything about all these other external voltage drops unless we change devices, but we can do something about battery sag. Now we can see what's going on with voltage sag if we look at a graph. It's the instantaneous drop, it only takes a few milliseconds to happen inside the battery right at the beginning of the discharge. The voltage drop after that is what happens from discharging the battery down. We're pulling out charge, so the voltage of the battery drops. Now if you look at the graph I just threw up on the screen, one shows a Samsung 30T being used and the other one shows a Sony VTC6. Now all the way up in the upper left hand corner, you can see with the green arrow pointing, you can see they start at around 4.17 volts or so. What happens then is a button is pressed and the battery, we start pulling current from the battery, it's discharging. Well almost instantly you can see the blue line for the Samsung 30T drop down to about, oh, about 3.9 volts. That's battery sag. That's not from the battery being discharged. That's the instantaneous voltage drop that's just inside the battery. Now inside a device, you're gonna also add on a whole bunch of other voltage drops from the wiring and battery contacts, etc. We're just talking about what the battery sag is. And then you can see the discharge start to curve down and go down to about, oh, 3.75 volts or so. That is the five second pulse that I've given the battery here. Essentially, you're pressing the button down for five seconds and discharging the battery, and that's why it's a slower discharge. And then I let go of the button, and you see the voltage snap right back up again, almost all the way back to at the beginning. That is also from the battery sag. Now, there is a slow rise after that to finish. That is also what's going on inside the battery. And those are the ions trying to find the little nooks and crannies and settle back in place again. So all that's due to battery sag, and it's just that portion in the middle where the battery is actually discharging. Now we can compare battery sag from two different batteries. And if you look down to the red discharge graph, you can see the Sony VTC6 dropping down all the way down to about 3.45 volts at the end of discharge, but the battery sag of it is around 3.65, 3.7 volts. You can see that on the left-hand side. That shows you the battery sag of the VTC6 is a lot greater than the battery sag on the Samsung 30T. And we'll go into uh, more detail about why different batteries have different voltage sags soon. This next graph is a VTC5A that I discharged at 20 watts, 40 watts, 60 watts, and 80 watts. And you can start to see the red 20 watt graph, there's very little actually initial drop. Most of it is this that long curve for the discharge and then it snaps back up when that five second pulse stops. A pulse being the amount of time I'm pressing the button and drawing current from the battery. So the draw you would take when vaping. And then if you fire, if you use the battery at 40 watts, you see more sag. It drops down to a lower voltage at so 60 watts, 80 watts, lower and lower and lower. You also see how a harder discharge, a higher power discharge, discharges the battery during the five second pulse. But if you just stay against the left hand side of the graph, you can see that there's greater and greater voltage sag for the higher and higher, higher power levels that you use a battery at. So battery sag, the voltage sag is not from the battery discharging. It's caused by something called internal resistance of the battery and it literally, there is resistance inside the battery. It's, it's not a superconductor, it's not a perfect uh, device, 
there are going to be power losses and stuff inside the battery. These power losses create heat, and this is what actually warms up a battery. Now, internal resistance has two parts that add up to what causes battery voltage sag. Part one is the resistance of the components of the battery. The metals inside the battery, there's small tabs inside. Um, the battery goop is smeared onto foil, copper foil and aluminum foil. Well, there's some tiny bit of resistance there. The electrolyte, the liquid that the ions pass back and forth between, that's a salty solution. That has a little bit of resistance. And also the positive and negative goop that's smeared on the foils that holds all the ions that go back and forth. Well, that, that material itself has some resistance. Each one of those resistances causes a little bit of a voltage drop when current is passing through the battery. And all that adds up to part one of what makes up the total battery voltage sag. Now part two is something more electrochemical, not purely physical resistance of the materials, but it's electrochemical in nature. Namely, it's how the ions inside the battery set up. They're not evenly distributed during a discharge. You may have more over on one side of the battery and less over on the other side of the battery, just very tiny dimensions. And the difference between the concentration and ions creates a difference in voltage, which we see as a voltage drop. So part one, resistance of the materials, and part two, the way the ions are set up, add up together to the voltage drop we see almost instantly in the first few milliseconds when we start pulling current from the battery. That's the battery voltage sag. The numbers we can use to find out what this is is what's called the DC internal resistance. And I provide this for all the batteries I've been testing about the past year or so. That DC internal resistance can determine how much voltage sag there is. Now, lower is better, namely less resistance. That's better, results in less sag. You get fewer low weak battery alerts and your battery hits harder if you have less sag, which makes sense. You know, if your battery, like with the graph I showed of the 30T, dips down to something, but the VTC6 dipped down a lot further. Well, the VTC6 is running at a lot lower voltage. That means it's not hitting as harder in a mech. It also has to work harder in a regulated device if it's running at a lower voltage. Now, you may have seen, some of you may have seen the term AC internal resistance and the, like the VAPCELL YR1030 AC internal resistance meter. It's a fantastic device, it's pretty accurate. That can be used to help judge the age of cells, to compare performance of cells and stuff. That AC internal resistance is not what battery sag is. It doesn't cause battery sag. We need the DC internal resistance in order to understand and compare batteries through the battery sag. Now the sag itself, the voltage drop that a battery will see, it's just Ohm's law. Resistance, namely the DC internal resistance, times the current flowing through it. If you got 0.1 ohm of internal resistance and 10 amps, you're gonna have one volt of sag. Namely, if you start at 4.2 volts, bam, it's gonna instantly drop to 3.2 volts and then start discharging from there. So obviously, the less sag you have, the higher voltage you're gonna be starting at while using the battery every time you press the button, and that's always a good thing. Now typically, for the best cells we use, it's about 0.012 ohms for the DC resistance. Again, you can't use the AC internal resistance. That's actually the standard. Most batteries from the big manufacturers give you a specification for AC internal resistance, but we can't use that for SAG. That number is lower than the DC resistance and just can't be used for comparing voltage SAG. We have to use the DC internal resistance. Now, you can go up to about 0.1 ohms or even higher. Now, we've got about an eight time difference, multi, you know, eight times uh, higher for some of the like uh, ultra high capacity or very low current rated cells, like maybe a low rated 18350s or 3600 milliampere hour, uh, 18650. And that means the voltage sag in this one be about eight times higher. And this is why using a battery, even if you're not worried about safety, if you use a battery that is maybe ultra high capacity, has a low current rating, which is not great, but you're using it at a very high power level, drawing lots of current from it, these ultra high capacity batteries have much higher internal resistance, which causes a lot more sag. So you're not able to use any of this extra capacity because the voltage drops way down very quickly. And either in a mech, you go, okay, this is no good anymore. Or in a regulated device, you get all these early, you know, at 50%, 70% battery left, you can start getting weaker early battery alerts because the battery's sagging so far in voltage.
due to this very high DC internal resistance. Now, something that makes things a little more confusing, especially when you're trying to compare two batteries directly with their DC internal resistance numbers is the amount of sag, which is due to the DC internal resistance, these two parts added up together, that can change as the cell heats up. Typically, the DC internal resistance goes down as the cell gets a little bit warmer. And that's because the electrochemical reactions inside the battery become more efficient as the battery heats up. So the resistance from part two drops a little bit. Part one may actually go up a touch, but part two will go down even more and the internal resistance drops. So you might see a battery drop down some, but then it doesn't go down as quickly. It kind of levels out a little bit, maybe before it drops down in voltage. Well, this can make it a little more confusing to compare batteries directly, you might say, hey, I've got a 0.012 battery and a 0.015 battery. Oh, I'll take the 0.012. Less resistance equals less sag. Problem is, different batteries, when they heat up, change their internal resistance by different amounts. So if the DC internal resistance number for two batteries is fairly close, then you might have to try both to see which works better for the way you vape. So DC internal resistance can go down as the cells become more efficient. Different cells at different amount of change, so be ready to compare cells if they're very close in performance. But DC internal resistance is still the best way to start choosing, excuse me, start choosing the hardest hitting battery or the one that may deliver the most power for the longest amount of time. Especially if you've got something like 0.012 ohms for one battery and 0.1 ohms for another. Clearly, this is going to have much lower, no matter what happens as it heats up, a battery with 0.012 ohm. DC internal resistance is going to have much less uh, battery voltage sag. Now, how can we minimize sag? What else can we do to improve the performance of our batteries now that we know that we've got battery sag? Well, take the lowest DC internal resistance, which is roughly, roughly the highest current rating. Almost all the time, a 30 amp battery is going to have a much lower internal resistance than a 10 amp battery. So even if you're not worried about safety, if you want better performance, stick to a higher current rating or higher DC internal resistance, excuse me, lower DC internal resistance, sorry. And if you've got a battery like a 25 amp and a 30 amp battery, it's not always true that the 30 amp battery is gonna have a lower internal resistance. Once you start coming uh, or choose, looking at two different current ratings that are close together, 20, 25 amps, 25 and 30 amps, then you're gonna have to start looking at this DC internal resistance number. There are exceptions to every rule, and for this case, it can also happen. You can reduce the battery current. Since the DC internal, excuse me, since the voltage sag is resistance times current, we've picked a battery, we can't do anything about the internal resistance, well, you can reduce the current, and that'll give you less sag. But that's often not an option. Uh, the things you can do, I mean, you just want to vape the way you want to vape, but if you go to a series mod, the current goes way down, or a parallel mod, because you're using less battery uh, current from each battery. It, you know, if you're drawing uh, 30 amps from your batteries, well, if you use two batteries, it'll be roughly 15 amps each versus 30 amps one battery. So those two batteries separately of 15 amps each will be running a lot easier. Each one will have less voltage sag and you'll get less sag overall. You can also rest more between each draw. Now, this affects part two. Part one will always be there. Resistance of metal will always be the resistance of the metal. But if you give the ions more time to get back into their nooks and crannies and positions to settle out, you know, if you're just hitting it and hitting it and hitting it, the battery never has a chance to rise back up in voltage again. You saw earlier on in the graphs, you know, the battery voltage would snap up a bit, but then the last bit can take, actually can take several minutes to rise all the way, but at least even a few more seconds in between, you can give the battery time to recover, rise back up in voltage some, that'll give you a harder hit the next time you take a draw. And don't use cold cells. The colder a battery gets, the less efficient it becomes, and this affects part two here. It just, the chemical reactions inside just aren't working as well, and so that decrease in efficiency means the battery is going to be running at a lower voltage and you just see the sag become greater and greater. Never charge a battery at below zero degrees Celsius, 32 Fahrenheit. That, that's a separate note, but I wanted to mention that now. That can just be plain old dangerous. It damages the battery inside. It can eventually lead to failure of the battery.
So we've got a couple things we can do to try to minimize SAG. It's always going to be part of what we do, but at least we have a few ways to help try to minimize it, better understand it, and find better ways to choose the batteries that best fit the way we vape. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you.